Come back to me with all your heart. Don't let fear keep us apart. Trees do bend, though straight and tall. So must we to others call. Long have I waited for your coming home to me and living deeply our new life. The wilderness will lead you to your heart where I will speak. Integrity and justice with tenderness you shall know long have i waited for your coming home to me and living deeply our new life you shall sleep secure with peace Faithfulness will be your joy. Long have I waited for your coming home to me and living deeply our new life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge our sins, our faults and failings, knowing that God is our loving God, always ready to forgive us, wiping away our sins and remember them no more. So we turn to the Lord to confess our sins, and we confess our sins to God and to one another, and to, we ask everybody in heaven and all of our sisters and brothers here with us in spirit, we ask for the prayers of everyone as we call on the Lord's healing, forgiving mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, 
but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then either by you or your son or daughter, or your male or female slave, or your beast, or by the alien who lives with you. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, Lord you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold. Sweeter also than syrup, or honey from the comb. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and the oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture Zeal for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, 
and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all. And he did, not any, he did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Through Abraham, our father in faith, the Hebrews came to know that unlike their neighboring and people in the neighboring tribes who believed in many, many gods, Abraham, through Abraham, God teaches us there's only one God. The truth came to Abraham of the Holy Spirit. There's only one true God who made every, heaven and earth. He made all things, not many gods. And to be faithful to this one true God, through Abraham and the story of Abraham and Isaac, his son, the Hebrew people were taught that unlike their pagan neighbors who had been, who had been trying to please the gods with offering child sacrifice, that God did not want child sacrifice. We saw that in the story that which taught people how Abraham was a truly devout man who would be willing to do whatever God wanted, even to offering up his only son even though he was old and his wife were elderly, they were not able to have any other child. He would be giving up his immortality, since in those days, at that time, they hadn't come to an understanding of personal immortality. You lived on in your male descendants, in your descendants. So Abraham was so devout. But then, as he's ready to do what he thought God wanted by offering the sacrifice of his own child, then God said to the angel who said, stop, I do not want that. Abraham then gets a, he gets to catch a sight of a, of a ram in the thicket and he grabs the ram and offers the ram as sacrifice. So then the Hebrew people began to have Hebrew sacrifice, but they had turned away from the child sacrifice of their neighbors and they began to have animal sacrifice. But then God through Moses taught the Hebrew people that if you're going to be true to this one true God, if you're going to love and serve this one true God, then you have to be good to your neighbors. You must be concerned with the relation, your relationship with your neighbors. And so through Moses, God gives the Ten Commandments to honor father and mother and to not to do anything against your, your neighbor not to steal each other's lives, not to steal each other's wives, not to steal each other's property, not to just steal or destroy each other's name, and not to even desire to do those things, and to honor your parents. And the first three commands about God being the only God and have no false gods, and the second command about not misusing the name of God to do harm to others or to to speak untruths, dishonesty, to perjure oneself, and not, and then to offer the the, the day of the Sabbath rest, to to the to, to time to acknowledge that this is the one true God that we must be faithful to, and to learn that to be faithful to this God involves the relationship with one another, and then through the prophets. God continues to teach his people, to teach the Hebrew people of what, how it is that they will serve and honor God and love the one true God. The prophets begin to let people know God speaks through the prophets. He has spoken through the prophets. I don't want your child, I don't want your animal sacrifice either. I don't, I don't need you to feed me. All the world is already mine, I don't need you. And, and, I don't, and the blood of goats, the blood of, of bulls, I, I don't need all of that, it's abhorrent to me. 
God says, I'm revolted by the blood of bulls and sheep and goats. And God then, through the prophets, shows how, how we are to truly love and honor this one true God. God says, I, I want you to love your neighbor. He expands on what Moses has already taught, that loving God and serving God means loving one's neighbor. <clears throat> So God says, it's useless to bring, I'm disgusted with the smell of you, the incense that you burn, and your moon festivals and your Sabbaths and your feasts, they're corrupted by your sins. No matter how much you pray, I will not listen, for your hands are covered with blood. You must, you must love your neighbor. Through the prophet Jeremiah, God says, don't, don't put your trust in the deceitful words of this building, this temple is the house of God. This is where God dwells. This is the temple of the Lord. Don't put your trust in those deceitful words. Jeremiah said God told him to stand at the doors of the temple and to tell the people coming in there, don't put your trust in those deceitful words that this is where God dwells. God says, only if you hear the orphan's cry and heed the widow's plea, will I remain with you in this place. You have to give help to those in need. The widows and the orphans were symbolic of all of those who, were, who had no husband to speak for them, no father to, to speak for them. Jesus aligned himself then with those prophets, the prophets who said, this is what God wants, that you share your bread with the hungry and shelter the homeless poor, and don't turn your back on your own, and set free the people who are being oppressed among you. Then you will be truly honoring me. But Jesus quotes from the, from the words of God through the prophet Isaiah when God says, this people honors me with their lips. All your religious practices mean nothing. They honor me, they give me lip service, but their hearts are far from me. And so we come to the gospel account where Jesus in John's gospel is shown to be cleansing the temple. Like the prophets before him, he wants to cleanse all this unworthy sacrifice, this meaningless sacrifice, to show what God really wants. And so Jesus is angry when he arrives at the temple because he sees what, what Matthew's gospel tells us, that he says, you've made this not a house of prayer, but you've turned it into a den of thieves, implying that what is going on here is no love of neighbor. Here in the temple where people are supposed to be offering worship to God and show their love for God or failing to love their neighbor and therefore their love of God is false. And so we had learned how the scribe had said to love God with all our heart, with all our thoughts, with all our strength and to love our neighbor as ourselves is worth more than any burnt offering or sacrifice. But the love of neighbor was not going on because the people who were cut traveling from distances, every year they had to go to Jerusalem to offer the sacrifice. They couldn't all, who were poor, could not always bring an animal with them. So for the convenience at the temple, there were those who were selling animals, but they were being cheated. Price gouging was going on. The neighbor was not being loved at all, but being cheated. And the money changers, those who were buying the, the animals in order to offer a sacrifice to the one true God. Those who were buying those, they couldn't use their pagan coinage. They had to have the religious coinage. So the pagan coins had to be exchanged for the religious coinage in order to buy the sacrifice worthy to be offered to God. And the money changers were also price gouging and cheating poor and ignorant people. There was no love of neighbor, and therefore there was no true love or worship of God. And so Jesus was angry. He drove them out. He cleansed the temple of all the false, that false worship, and showed what true worship of God consists in. Loving your neighbor as yourself. And so Jesus himself, when he speaks about destroy this temple and the temple of his body, he knows that he is too going to be sacrificed. Like the prophets before him, the Hebrew prophets, how they had been stoned to death, run out of town and killed. 
Jesus said they, that those who killed them were the predecessors of the, of the current religious authorities who were just like their predecessors. They were filling up a vessel with the blood of the prophets. They had been filling up the, blood, the vessel with the blood of the prophets and now they can fill the, that vessel up with the blood all the way to the brim with the blood of Jesus. Because Jesus, like the Hebrew prophets, was to continue their teaching and was also good to be put to death. And he freely gave up his life because he continues to proclaim the truth, the truth of God's love for all people. He angered those in religious authority because he taught the love of God was for all people, not just the righteous, but for the sinners as well. Not just for those in the faith community who were, who were called and chosen and set apart to proclaim the good, the love of God and the truth about God, but all those people outside the faith community, the pagans and those people who also are God's children. And so when Jesus continued proclaiming that truth and was opposed, he was willing to continue to proclaim the truth, the message that the Father had entrusted to him, even though he knew the consequences of it would be his own death, his own condemnation and rejection. But he had, he had confidence in the Father's love and he offered his life. He gave up his life. Greater love than this no one has than he laid down his life for his friends. Jesus laid down his life for the, all the people of the world because he was proclaiming the truth that all the people of the world are God's beloved children. And that God never stops forgiving him, never stops forgiving any of us because he never stops loving us. God is our loving Father. Jesus brings back what the Hebrew prophets had already offered. That God is good and gracious. He does not punish us because of our sins. He has compassion as a father having compassion on his children. Jesus brought that wonderful truth and showed the primacy of the love of neighbor. That the love of neighbor was more important than all the other laws. All the other laws were meaningless if they didn't come to ultimately support the meaning, the one the supreme law of scripture to love your neighbor as yourself. Even the law of the Sabbath rest, Jesus showed, did not take precedence over the love of neighbor. And that's why he showed coming to the aid of a neighbor, healing a neighbor on the Sabbath was acceptable and was the right thing to do because that was the true meaning of the law of God. Keeping the Sabbath rest was to be faithful to the law of God and to be faithful to this God. But if you don't understand that to keep faithful to this God is the love of neighbor, then that's how you make that law of, of the Sabbath rest more important than the ultimate meaning of the law, to treat others as we want to be treated. So we love God by the way we live our lives. That's how we serve this one true God. By the way we live our lives, by the way we keep those Ten Commandments, and the way we keep the one supreme law of Scripture, which sums up all the commandments, that we love our neighbor as we love ourselves. That means we try to live good and holy lives, just, honest, trustworthy, and compassionate. And that when it comes to the eternal destiny of any single person in the whole world, that we listen to Jesus who teaches us, do not condemn anyone and you will not be condemned. You be compassionate as your heavenly father is compassionate. So Jesus teaches us that truth and we learn from him how to offer perfect worship and praise to our loving God, the loving God, the one loving God of all of us. Peace be with you. Let us profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. 
And now we bring to you our loving Father in heaven, our loving God, our prayers petition for ourselves and for all people of the world everywhere, sharing in God's love for all of us. That our keeping the Lord's commandments may give us the joy of knowing that we are loving and serving God and our neighbor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Lord's special blessing upon those preparing to be received into the Catholic Church at Easter, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the trip of Pope Francis to Iraq may be safe and that his visit will encourage our long-suffering fellow Christians in Iraq and help bring peace to that war-torn nation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Lord's blessings upon those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the eternal happiness of all who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will hear and answer the prayers we now mention in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, our loving Father in heaven, hear these prayers for ourselves and for all people everywhere. Help us and guide us with your Holy Spirit of truth to be faithful to your commands, all of your commands, by being faithful to the supreme law of Scripture that we love our neighbor as ourselves. We pray to you, Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all in this holy church. O God, author of every, be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, Contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us to imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this, this is my body, which, which will, will be given, given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Father, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Father, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died. In your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With confidence, we continue praying to the loving Father of all of us, and we can pray, we pray on behalf of all people everywhere who are truly all the children of God, our one God who loves us all. And so as we pray, we pray, the Lord is pleased with us when we remember all of his children as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Father, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Deep within, I will plant my law, not on stone, but in your heart. Follow me, I will bring you back. You will be my own, and I will be your God. 
I will give you a new heart, a new spirit within you. For I will be your strength. Deep within, <coughs> I will plant my law, not on stone, but in your heart. Follow me, I will bring you back. You will be my own, and I'll And see your God, for I will be your hope. Deep within, I will plant my law, not on stone, but in your heart. Follow me, I will bring you back. And I will bring you back. Deep within, I will plant my law, not on stone, but in your heart. Follow me, I will bring you back. You will be my own. And I will be your God. For those of you who are watching, and we know that you're not able to take part in the breaking of the bread with us, the bread of the Eucharist, the presence of the Lord, know that you're not deprived of God's presence. Don't feel that the house is empty, that you're alone without the presence of Almighty God. For God is truly present with you. As you have prayed with us, as you are watching and praying with us and, and praying out, out of love for, for your own selves and for your family and your friends and for all the people of the world, you are in God and God is truly in you. And this is the truth that Jesus proclaims to us. When we keep the command of Jesus to love one another, Jesus says, the Father and I will come to you and we will dwell in you, we will make our home in you. God never abandons any of us. You never have to feel abandoned or empty or away from the presence of God. Even without the Eucharist, God is still present with you. But we long to come together and share in the breaking of the bread because Jesus called us to be able to physically and openly express this love of one another. By the breaking of the bread, we share together the presence of God in, this, in sharing the, the bread of the Eucharist. And so it is a great act of love that Jesus tells us to do in his memory. And we look forward to the day when you and all of us can be gathered together again and break the bread together as the first followers of Jesus did. The, the, actually the apostles say, they came together to hear the memoirs of the apostles. They heard the scriptures. They first went to the synagogue originally to hear the scriptures. And then they went to someone's home where they had the breaking of the bread. They broke bread together. <clears throat> and as those two disciples recognized Jesus when he began to break the bread and said how they had come to recognize him in the breaking of the bread, so we too will learn to recognize Jesus in the breaking, the sharing of the bread of the Eucharist. But even now we do it spiritually and you are truly united with all of us. We're all united together with our loving God with all of God's family and one another in this holy spiritual communion. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. 
Return to me, return to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. Return to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. Now the time of grace has come, the day of salvation. Come and learn now the way of our God. Return to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God.